Hi, my name is Dr. Mike Evans, and this is a quick overview for people with kidneys that are failing who need some insight into the treatment options, including the different types of dialysis, as well as how to know when it's time to start dialysis. So let's start with the Kidney 101. You know, we talk a lot about balance and health, and your kidneys are the superstar of balance, whether it's fluids or, or body chemistries or blood pressure. Our kidneys orchestrate with other major organs to keep this delicate equilibrium going 24-7. All this while filtering out waste products created by our body's metabolism. So, so when your kidneys start to shut down, your body has a hard time keeping a balance. You might retain fluid or, or waste products, your potassium or sodium might become abnormal, your blood pressure might rise. This can all make you feel rotten and, and raise your risk for serious illness. So you need a new way to filter and balance your fluids and electrolytes, and, and this is where decisions about kidney transplant and dialysis come in. It takes quite a while to plan your transplant or dialysis though. Your doctor will usually start planning for this when your GFR, which stands for glomerular filtration rate, a test of your kidney, is around 20. This is about the same as 20% kidney function. This doesn't mean you need to start dialysis though. Most people start dialysis when their GFR gets below 12 or so. Actually, doctors are moving away from starting dialysis based on just a number. Since this led to people starting dialysis earlier, and when we look back, these people actually didn't seem to do any better. So, so now, new Canadian guidelines consider your numbers, but recommend starting dialysis when you begin developing symptoms of kidney failure, such as severe fatigue, nausea, decreased appetite, and shortness of breath. However, this symptom assessment can be tricky, especially if you have other illnesses going on. So you need to work with your kidney team and your nephrologist, the, the doctors that look after kidneys, to figure out the symptoms that will improve with dialysis. We want people to start thinking about their treatment options at least a year before they are going to need to start dialysis, as it takes at least three to six months to make dialysis happen. So let's consider your dialysis options. One option is actually to do nothing. You know, you may feel that because of where you are in life, uh, that your best choice is, is actually to let your kidney failure run its course. We call this conservative care, and the goal is to preserve kidney function for as long as possible through diet and medications, but knowing that this will not stop the slow decline in the kidney function and will ultimately lead to death. Conservative care is often chosen by people with other medical conditions who aren't candidates for transplant and feel the burden and discomfort caused by dialysis outweigh the potential benefits. The next option is to get a new donated kidney, either from a living donor, a relative or, or a friend usually, or, or someone who has died suddenly known as a deceased donor. Not everyone is a candidate for kidney transplant, so it's really important to find out if this is a treatment option for you. As far as the two types of kidneys, deceased donor kidneys are not available immediately. In fact, in Canada, about 20% of people on dialysis are waiting for a deceased donor kidney transplant, and it usually takes on average about five to eight years. If you can get a transplant, this is the best treatment option for most people, since you will live longer and, and better than on dialysis. So that's why it's important to think about the other type of kidney donor, getting a kidney from a living donor, usually a family member or friend. Kidneys from a living donor tend to last longer than those from a deceased donor, and the transplant can happen earlier, even before you start dialysis. That's why it's important for you to talk to family and friends about the possibility of them donating a kidney to you. This reminds me of my neighbor and friend, John Nabarezny, who found out that the guy who rented out his basement needed a new kidney. And so he went out and got himself tested, and it turned out he was a match. So he donated his own kidney. Incredible. We need more people like John, and it's probably a lesson in altruism for all landlords, I suspect. Okay, I digress, but, but this leads us to our third option, dialysis. Dialysis is when we replace the function of the kidney using special equipment to clean the blood. There are two basic kinds of dialysis, hemodialysis, which happens outside the body, and peritoneal dialysis, which happens inside the body. Hemodialysis is when your blood is passed through an artificial kidney, which is called, of course, a dialyzer. You'll need to make some changes to your diet and, and drink less fluid. Hemodialysis is usually done for four hours, three times each week, and requires access to your blood, either through an intravenous line inserted in your neck or a fistula. A fistula is created surgically by connecting an artery and a vein in your arm. Now this can take three months to be ready for use, so it requires some planning. You should ask your doctor which is the right option for you. Occasionally hemodialysis is done at home even sometimes at night while you're asleep, which frees up your days and your diet. But most of the time, when we were talking about HD, we were talking about you going to a clinic or, or a hospital to have it done. Peritoneal dialysis, or PD, is when the blood is cleaned through a lining in the inside of your abdomen called your peritoneum. 
With PD, we put a tube close to your belly button into the peritoneum and pour in a special solution called dialysate and leave it there for a few hours. The solution slowly sucks, the, the medical word is diffuses, the waste products out of your blood. You then drain the fluid back out through the tube and then fill up the peritoneum again. We call this an exchange and it generally takes 20 to 30 minutes. There are two ways to do peritoneal dialysis. This has to do with the timing of the exchanges. So first we have continuous ambulatory peritoneal dialysis or CAPD. Typically this means four exchanges that you perform yourself every day using bags of dialysis fluid. During the time between exchanges you can move about as normal. Secondly, we have APD or automated peritoneal dialysis where a machine that you set up just before going to bed does the exchanges for you at night for seven to 10 hours while you are asleep. During the day, you might have some fluid in your abdomen, but you are free to move about normally. Okay, so now you know about kidney failure, and, and if you want to do dialysis, the next task is picking which treatment you prefer. Well, let's start with some obvious reasons to have your dialysis done at the hospital. Doing dialysis at home requires an ability to self-manage and, and problem solve, and I, I suspect your aptitudes in this department are better than you think. And I also get that it can be scary for you or, or your loved ones to learn a new skill, especially if you're set in your ways. Having said that, I think there are some conditions that can make it hard to self-care reliably. So for example, alcohol or, or, or drug addiction or cognitive impairment, or, or maybe you have another medical condition, or, or you're just finding things very hard right now. These can all be especially challenging for you if you don't have a reliable helper. Some people who have had a lot of abdominal surgeries can't do peritoneal dialysis either. The next category are challenges that need some problem solving, but can usually be overcome. So, you or your loved one may have limited vision or, or hearing or maybe some learning problems or physical limitations and so on. Extra training, mentorship and family support may be required. So for example, hearing disabled patients can use vibration alarms. Frail patients can have family members trained. There is mentorship from patients who have overcome the same barriers. Or in some places, a visiting nurse can help set up your dialysis cycler machine at night. Dialysis experts will often say that if you can manage an ATM bank machine, or have the manual dexterity to button a shirt, you can manage home dialysis. Just like there are factors that make us think that dialysis in a clinic is likely the answer, there are factors that make us think that dialysis at home will be a better choice. For example, you might live far away from a dialysis clinic or, or have a fear of needles or, or you might not be happy following the fluid restriction or diet required for hemodialysis. All issues that can make peritoneal dialysis at home a better choice. Having said all that, I think the biggest reasons people pick home peritoneal dialysis are personal, with the number one reasons being flexibility and control. People often pick home PD because they prefer to self-manage in the comfort of their own home, and they don't want to travel to the hospital three times a week. You may want to travel, you may care for others uh, and, and need to be around, or, or perhaps your work or, or school can't accommodate frequent absences. It is possible to travel with HD, but you'll need a hemodialysis clinic where you're going, and this might be expensive and, and limit your travel options. Another factor that might drive your choice is whether there is evidence that one type of dialysis is better in terms of health outcomes. Well, there's never been a definitive trial comparing peritoneal dialysis and in-center hemodialysis, so there's a bit of controversy, but most docs think that patients who are candidates for either type of dialysis will do just as well in either form in terms of survival and quality of life. I think the reality here is that patients do best when they're able to get the information ahead of time, come up with a plan, and pick the type of dialysis that fits with their lifestyle. If we exclude really sick people who would not be able to do home dialysis, studies tell us that most patients who receive comprehensive education about the different types of dialysis will choose home dialysis, usually peritoneal dialysis. Okay, let me summarize. There are two main treatments if you need dialysis. One is hemodialysis, where you typically go into a hospital or a clinic on a predictable schedule and are hooked up to a dialyzer for about four hours, three times a week. And you need to make dietary changes. Some patients are trained to do their own hemodialysis at home. The second treatment is peritoneal dialysis at home, which can be done with 30 minute exchanges four times a day, or by setting up a machine at bedtime, which automatically does the exchanges while you sleep. PD is portable and you can take it with you if you need to travel or if you want to do it outside your home. Both these approaches require a procedure for access and, and some training. So if possible, it's important that you make this decision at least three to six months before you actually need dialysis. Both of them require you to keep an eye on your symptoms, severe fatigue, nausea, decreased appetite and shortness of breath, since these will guide you and your kidney team to know when it's time to start dialysis. 
Failing kidneys is, is definitely a journey, and, and hopefully this overview, combined with discussions with experts, expert patients, and people you trust, will make your journey more personalized. Hope this helps, and take care.